Welcome back. Um, I'm gonna make a quick a quick video. This one is just for the patrons only. Um, I wanna just basically go through the principles of what I do when doing a graffiti piece and how I break it down. Bear in mind, I was looking and I've seen a few tutorials and they really show you the whole simple draw an S like this and make it fat. Um, I want to avoid this kind of lesson completely, to be honest with you. I don't wanna be diving too deep in this because it's nothing that I've ever used or done. It makes sense, I understand the rules, and if you are a complete beginner, use this method. Um, but I, I wanna just go a bit deeper and show you my processes and how I do it. Hopefully you guys take something from it and can use it in your own art, in your own artwork, in your own letters. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna jump straight in for you Patreons and show you how to draw a graffiti piece. So let's get to it. So in this video, I'm just gonna keep it as real as I can with you guys. A few of the tips may be a bit hard to grasp, but I just want to show you guys how I break down letters and get a good a good flow, a good shape um, for the style that I do. It's hard to obviously teach this because everyone has a different style, so work on your style. Take a few things if you can from this video and just get better, really. So yeah, I'm going to start. I'm going to end up writing the, the letter SOTEP, the word SOTEP, um, and start off with the S shape. So I treat my letters almost like pieces of Lego that connect together. So I work with shapes that interlock. Um, so let's just do with the S, I'll, I'll start off by showing you. Let me start off with a simple shape, like a rectangular kind of shape here. Okay, so that'd be the base shape, first one down. And from there, I build upon it like I'm sculpting. I don't like to do, like I said earlier, that, that all right, there's an S and let's just fan it up. That's, uh, it's simple, it works, but um, it's never really been the way that I've gone to learn how to draw letters. So I'll just keep showing you guys. And let's say from this shape, an S shape will go like, like this, let's say. So with this, I'm just gonna put the second shape up here. So another sort of rectangle. And don't be too precious at this current time because this is just laying in different, different shapes in place and building up on it. Okay, from there, um, let's do the middle connecting piece. So it's also another part of it of itself. Let's just pull that. See, you find a shape, and then you can see where you can build on it a little bit. So here we go. Here's the center. Here's a center connected piece. And then you get a good eye of um, where you can work on the bottom of the S. So now from this point, once again, another rectangle shape connecting to this piece. I'll just throw it to about centre way for now. Just for now. There's, nothing's going to say these shapes will stay the same further down the line. Right now I'm just trying to build a basic shape which I can build on. And it really is just a, like sculpting. You're just putting layer upon layer of letter. Um, there's a central point of the S there, which I put in. Um, I want to throw a bit more balance to this side, so I'm going to actually put the shape starting here and another rectangle. That is got some exaggeration on it. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. And that's another shape in. So there you go, how many shapes is that? We've got one, two, three, four, five shapes. Five shapes, and you've already got a stylized S there. You could build on top of that if you want to keep it that like that. But I wanna I'm gonna really just take this tutorial out as far as I can take it with you guys. Um, and maybe draw something really in depth. So I'm just gonna take it as far as I can and show you guys what other add-ons you can add. So if you want to change the shape completely, I like to add another another square shape here. 
and kind of work that back in there like boom more balance on the front of the letter there um, a connective here to fill out that middle space so stuff like this might keep that like that boost it up now from here like I might actually pull this over more to the left so just throwing us like putting a random shape if you're not sure what what you're doing there just throw in a random shape and see how it sits because then if I'm putting a square in here and creating a new shape I'm going to lose this edge at the top and use that for weight on the back of the letter there and pull it in Okay, then just rub up the guidelines you put in earlier. And you should have a rough, a rough shape like that, real simplistic, um, but then gives you a great opportunity to layer upon the layers. So looking at the basic shapes, I'm just gonna do a few things that add in a few knots in. So start from the basic shape, we started off with the first shape. If I draw a line there, I can then mold the, uh, mold the, the starting lines, the basic lines. So build up from here and follow the guidelines from the beginning. And let's say from this top bit, I want to connect these two, the middle section and the top together. Using the basic, I'm just going to add a little drop down so then I can connect and then connect that two together just to tighten up that S shape. Another little thing you can do to stylize your layers uh, is actually cut the sections into pieces. So this was one basic shape to begin with. Um, I'm just going to divide and line up here. But as I go up, keep going a little bit further. And I do a little angular shape and then pull up. And now look how from there, I can then take it back to the, just the initial starting shape and work it back in. So now I'm also breaking shapes from the original shapes I started to build. And the same goes here. Link it in. Now already with the darker lines, you start to see much more, much more shape happening. It seems like a lot more detail has been put in place from the original starting shapes you first put in. And we had this shape up here. I'm just gonna do the same as I just did with that last shape is add little knots at the top, these little triangles, and then bring it back into the original shape. Just like so. As I'm going here as well, I'm also thickening the lines up I want. I have like a medium, medium thickness around the layer itself just to make it up, just make it stand out for this video really and I'm just going to pull straight from there just make sure you take time with every line you're putting into place make sure each one is sat correct 
and same here, I'm just gonna pull the line inwards. But I feel like, once again, you gotta go with a lot of your gut feelings of how shapes are formed. And this is something you get by just looking at objects in the real world. It sounds crazy, I know, like the real world lessons applying to letters, but trust me, um, you get a feel for it and a grasp. I know if I drag this, let's, I'll show you, if I drag this straight in here, I'm gonna get this kind of flattened shape, which I think kind of, that will break the flow of the image. For me, personally, that breaks it. I'm not too much of a fan of that, so I like to go with this shape that's sort of flying outwards. So I'm gonna curl this ending in, like like that, like a little shoe, like, it's, there you go. Just because now that's continuing with the flow of the shape, instead of coming across here and just hacking it in half, I'm literally trying to move with the shape. And then, Keep the flow going. Just like so. Another quick tip as well to really add a lot more dimension to your letters really quickly is line thicknesses. You see where it starts off here and it has a build up and the line's getting pushed towards this edge. If you thicken up this edge compared to this side, it gives the illusion like the letters falling more into that, in towards that side. And line thicknesses is one of those little tricks. So if you start mastering line thicknesses like thick and thin, your pieces go from a seven to a 10. They look so much more dynamic, a lot more educated. And that's one thing I wish I learned earlier, is work more on the line thicknesses. There's nothing worse than someone doing a great letter and just having the same thickness around the whole thing. It's a bringing lines in tight and uh, lines out to different thicknesses. Now here, I wanna take this, this first structure line and pull it into this shape. And go with that initial shape. So I'm actually connecting the pieces now from the, from the first shapes we put down. That's what's always good to have the good foundation in place because at this stage, it just helps. And I made a little mistake here. There's a line here, but once again, you, you notice this with your mistakes, you get to find out more things about your letters. This little line here, I like it. So I'm gonna keep it in place, but with a thin line. So just flick it in. And then keep that outside line thicker. And that's using the line finishes again to really pick out different shapes and different layers. Okay, I'm gonna follow this one. Just, I'm just gonna keep this one how it is for now. And the same for this side. Just, this is a simple rectangle. That's how easy some shapes can be. I haven't really seen many artists that do the middle joining before. I've, I'm sure I'm not the only one who does it, but I just don't like that empty space always in the middle of the letters. I really like that sort of shape connecting to. And now it's just a process of going around the basic shapes, adjusting them to what sits right with your letter to make it balanced. I'm sorry if this tutorial is a bit all over the place. It's, it's very hard for me to explain this sort of process with letters because there's nothing I'm pulling reference from apart from my own head. Um, I'm sure as you graffiti writers know, you probably understand what I'm saying as you do graffiti, so you know a lot of the processes already. But bear with me, and hopefully you'll be able to go, oh yeah, I know I know what he's saying, I know it makes sense to me. Because like letters, letters um, they have forms and shape, but it just it's a bit tricky to explain how I'm building it together. So here I might, got the original shape, I'll pull up a second one. Um, throw it in. I'm gonna time lapse the rest of this S for you guys, just because now I'm just with all the basics down. I'm just going over them and adding a few notches here and there, and then we can move on to how I join the rest of the piece to the first letter. But I always start with the letter S and build on it. I don't just think of the single letter as building upon itself. I see the whole piece as one built-in structure. So I don't think S O T E P. I think SOTEP, one whole piece connected together. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm gonna tie up this and I move on to the O for you guys and I'll show you what I'm doing doing with that.
Okay, so once the S is down, um, like I said before, with the O, I'm not treating the O as a separate letter in general. I'm sort of looking at the S and where would the O shape fit on from the S. So once that we broke down into parts, now we're breaking the whole piece into parts um, with pin the letter O in place. Um, so look at looking at this shape here. There's a lot of space for let's just throw like a shape to come in here maybe like a, a rectangle like to me that fits in that fits in okay it's not breaking too much of the the s shape and then you've got this flowing shape which i kind of like so i want to kind of keep that as well and go with it so it's always pushing towards that way um and this is just another shape all together and then obviously you have the middle of the O which is like like that so I'm just putting that in there so that's just that's just the basic shapes I want to work with right now for an O. S, O, I'm doing like a bit of a D with that down there, so let's just give it that for now. And maybe pull it up a little bit that way. And you just adjust as you go. So the second shape, I'll probably come into here. I'm not worrying too much about all oh, the sense of it. We all know what an O looks like. It's just that round shape there. As long as it's got that principle here as an O, um, I'm going to work with it. And even this here, for simple form, I'm, I'm liking this. I might adjust this a tiny bit, make it a bit smaller in the middle. Maybe add a hook in there. Kind of look a bit close towards an A. But my style, if you know my style, it's not really... The, wild, the wilder pieces, the bigger pieces I get, they can be misread sometimes, but the letters, the basic forms are there. Just takes a lot of graffiti people graffiti people then become the only people that can read it but if you go for this style that's that's sort of almost towards wild style like so so exact same process like with the s um now the perfect time to put added add-ons in so i feel like here's a bit empty so i might just i'm gonna put this random shape in for now and I feel like that can just connect into nowhere, so oh, I'll throw it back from there. It's coming between the S, it could be, it's obviously connected somewhere to the O through here, which is out of, out of sight to the viewer. And just put it there, just to break it up a little bit, add a bit more different to it, a bit more difference, and throw that, and keep the top. I might actually throw the top maybe this way instead to go with that shape. So here's the, the shape's got this little kick. I'm sort of pushing towards that and keeping keeping the direction kind of the same. And yeah, throw that like, like that. Ooh -wee. And once again, I'll probably add a bit of an add-on there to replicate the style from the S. The S has a few add-ons. It has a few of the same, similar shapes. I'm just translating that now to the over towards the O. And when you get to a point where you think, yeah, I can see the basic shapes are in place, now I want to build on it. Exactly the same process as the S now. I'm just going to start building the shapes in place. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to time lapse this again. There's not really a lot to explain once the basics are in, form, are, in, are in place. Just get the pencil, darken things up. But just remember your line, your line thicknesses. So, like, in the layer will be a lot thinner, and then I'll thicken up loads, like here. Keep playing with your line thicknesses, I can't stress that enough. And see, there's like a little tick here. Like, bring it out with a line, so it goes like a thicker towards that point. And then... A lot thinner towards an ending of the point. And yeah, I just tie up this quickly and move on to the next letter.
as now that's the S and the O in place um, using the same principle and building together S O S first and build on the second letter put the O in place but bear in mind it's one whole image that's this is how you create harmony in your actual graffiti pieces instead of having all these different letters that all look different They're all good letters but they all look separated in that piece because then there's no real harmony or congruence in each letter so but building the whole way through using the same shapes connecting each one um it has no other option but to be harmonious um a funny thing i, I like to think of it almost like a tank like you have different parts of a tank you've got the top bit the bottom bit the wheels the cannon on the front but each bit separately is just connected to create the final um the final product so yeah this is like just treated the same way just each part connects together and then you make your tank and you put it out on the wall and then you're ready for war i hope this is making sense to you guys i'm going off track a bit um but from the two letters now the t the t shape once again with the two letters in place i get a good feel of where the starting t shape will go and i'm going to start with just a rectangle here if any of you can guess where is a good shape like obviously that ain't gonna look too good here. But to be honest, that would actually look pretty good if it came in more under here. But for my eyes, um, a better shape would be probably fill up this space here, just a rectangle. And probably bend in here. And then a kit back, probably a kit back as well. Like, so this. This bit here is looking a bit empty, so I might just throw it like that, like that kind of shape. And that's my first shape. Real basic, really just thrown in place. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys can see that on the camera, but that is, um, to me, that's pretty solid. That's pretty, pretty congruent with the flow of things and how things are going. Now here's here for the T. I feel like I could got a good space now to use this shape here to really sit above the S and the O. Um, this is the brilliance of actually joining each letter at this at the shape because the T will actually change naturally depending on the previous letters. So let's just put in a rectangle for first, just so I know how it's connecting up, and maybe. Just throw, just throw something out there, like, like that, as a shape, as a shape that's just there in place, I'll probably switch this around so it goes that way, Just bring that out a little bit, just give me more of an idea of what I'm, how far I'm going to take the T without it looking too out of balance. Um, just initial shape, use that, cut it in. See, I like this little line here. I don't know where that's going to be, but I sort of like bringing that out. Maybe bring it back in. We're going to throw an arrow in here because why not? If your graffiti piece needs an arrow. Now, to me, the arrow is actually kind of breaking the harmony a little bit, but I'm going to keep it in place. And I might actually make the decision to lose that top bit as well. Yeah, lose that top bit and just go with this here. Now 
as you can see here, there's way too much over this side. So I just like the shape, but I'm going to bring it in a lot closer towards the O. So maybe like here. Maybe there. And I'm actually going to break this the same way we did with the S here, where I broke it in two. I'm going to do it right here on the T, just so I feel like it's a little bit empty at the top there. And bring it back to the original shape and follow this down. And a little add-on here, because everything that size had an add-on so far. And it's just just building up. Same with the previous uh, the previous layers. Once the basics are done down, it makes it a lot more easier for you to have a guidance system of where you want to put different shapes and add. Even with this T here, you can just keep adding for days. Like if you want to go really wild, you could add more shapes here. Um, a square here, and then throw in like a connection, so it connects. But it's just important that you get the basics down and then keep building on that, just like clay. You've got the basic and then you add clay, add clay and sculpt until you get the final image. Um, so I'm happy with that shape with the T right now to show you guys. Um, if I was in my studio and had all the time in the world, I would just be, you know what I mean, rubbing out, reworking things. But um, I just try to get through this tutorial and just get, try and give you a good understanding. I'm sure you probably gather that from, from the way I'm speaking about it and the way I'm trying to show you guys. So with the T again, just work on the line fitnesses now. Pull the shapes out I want to keep and rub out the ones I want to forget about. Um, and then, yeah, we're just building to the next letter, the E and the P. And I'll try and show you guys once again how I'm breaking it down. So straight to the time lapse now. And once again, here we go now, it's starting to come together. You've got the S, the O, and the T, a nice flow. Um, and even at this point, if your letters aren't flowing and you're not happy with it, and you're like, oh, it's a bit broken down, there's nothing stopping you from then going back to the S. Because now we see there's a there's a bit of a shape here. You could, you could fit something in there. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, there's so much more things you can do from this point. Just remember to keep it loose, man. It's nothing serious. It's just letters. It's just a bit of fun. And then just keep it all going and creating stuff. So you gotta then pull this up. If I had a different, the funny thing is, if I had a different S at this point, the whole piece would be completely different because I have different spaces to fill up or different areas where I can bend more shapes. And this comes with experience, the more you start bending with the shapes. It literally is like playing with Legos. The more experience you have with putting Legos together, you can make better things. So just keep looking for those spots where you can put a layer or shape in and uh, create something completely new. And that's basically where it's at. Once you get those new spots, you start creating letters nobody's seen before. And once people start seeing that these are new letters and a new style, you have your own original form. And once you have that, man, there's no stopping you. You can do anything because you're unique. You're not copying scene. You're not looking at soft walls and going, yo, I'm nicking his S, which you see a lot of artists do. You're just creating your own unique style. So yeah, so let's just jump straight into the E now. And this actually here is a nice shape for the E. You can see it already. Um, straight away, an E shape. I do my E's for this, probably like, like a free, like the free sort of E shape. Um, I'm definitely going to come from here and just like pull out. Like that. I can just see that straight away. Like, I don't even know where the rest of the letter's going to go, but I just know instinctively that shape is there um, already. And then... From there. And the more letters that get down for me, it gets a lot easier than to start ripping into the flow of how it's supposed to go. 
and it's just the same as before I'm just going to put in the shapes in place um, obviously I want to keep the whole piece level as well so I might just draw a faint line from the top of the S um, to around where the E will be because I like that those two being the same sort of height and the T sort of being above the whole piece um, and then once again I'm just laying in, laying in shapes that I want to bring forward so I bring that in let's pull that another shape up here may ring it down a bit more And I'll probably bring it just a bit further, throw off a bit of off balance there. And there's the E. And like before, <coughs> once you like, oh, okay, I'm happy with that. I like where the basic shapes are sat. Um, you just go straight in and going darker just pick up all the lines you want to keep and then moving on to the final layer so yeah I'm going to tie up this again for you guys And there we have it guys, that is how I draw graffiti pieces. This is literally how I do it, like I said at the beginning. Um, I've seen other tutorials where it is tutorials, here's an S, make it fat. I mean, um, guys, we're not in year two, do you know what I'm saying, like bubble writing. I never really found that helpful anyway, when I was a, when I was a beginner, I'd rather take letters I liked and sort of try and imitate that when I started doing graffiti. Um, so yeah, I really hope you guys got a lot from how to draw letters. Um, obviously there's a few other tricks here like the 3D and um, a few effects like hey I'll, I'll show you now because it's just for the Patreons I'll show you guys now like say you wanna it's cool you like the basic letters and you wanna add an effect like cracks um, a good way to do this is to start by drawing a little a little U sort of shape a bent U like that and then you wanna figure out in your head where you're gonna end the crack so over here somewhere um, and then I'll just draw like a bigger sort of U like that and now, taking your pencil, you want to connect, connect the two, but not directly. So make sure you, you want to square it out. So let the pen drag a little and just stop like that. And just stop. And do the exact same towards this point and stop. Like that. And then the rest of the, the, rest of the crack you can leave for the imagination. Or if you want to extend that crack, I like to just make a rough little square like this and point off in each direction, so give an indication towards there's where the crack's happening and then just fly off somewhere else like that and then it gives you a crack and then you can just do that effect all over so up here with the P, the other little U shape like before um, the other end and then I can just have a straight up, straight up one like that um, if you want a tutorial on 3D and stuff, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to make that for you for you guys. And any other videos that you patrons want to see, just let me know and I'll have no problem at all making that. Um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna add a few effects on here um, on time lapse and then come to an end result. Then I'm gonna save this for you guys, put it as a PDF. So if you want to download this piece just to take home with you and have a look at and work with, that's totally up to you. So um yeah, I'm just gonna time lapse for you guys now. Um and that's it. And that's it everybody, that is how I draw a graffiti piece. Um, I really hope you guys got stuff out of this video um, and I really hope you took stuff in the way. Just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's been supporting me on Patreon. Um, it's so good to see it growing and like 
it really has given me the time and opportunity to create these tutorials and a lot more other kinds of material I would never have made without you guys. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate it. And if you guys want to see anything else, just drop me a message on Patreon and I'm more than happy to create it for you guys. Anything, like um, you might want to learn animals or characters, anything I can help you with, um, I'll be more than happy to make. So yeah, um, just keep practicing, keep getting up, and um, to the next video, man. Take care. Peace.